The Almohad Caliphate British English, Alm. HD, US English, Elm Head, Berber languages, Imwaden, from Arabic Almhedon, Al Mawahidin, the Monotheists, or the Unifiers, was a Moroccan Berber Muslim movement and empire founded in the 12th century. The Almohad movement was founded by Ibn Tumart among the Berber Mismuda tribes of southern Morocco. Around 1120, the Almohads first established a Berber state in Tinmel in the Atlas Mountains. They succeeded in overthrowing the ruling Almoravid dynasty governing Morocco by 1147, when Abd al mumin al Gumi conquered Marrakesh and declared himself caliph. They then extended their power over all of the Maghreb by 1159. Al Andalus soon followed, and all of Islamic Iberia was under Almohad rule by 1172. The Almohad dominance of Iberia continued until 1212, when Muhammad III. Al -Nasir, 1199-1214 was defeated at the Battle of Las Navas de Toulouse in the Sierra Morena by an alliance of the Christian princes of Castile, Aragon, Navarre and Portugal. Nearly all of the Moorish dominions in Iberia were lost soon afterwards, with the great Moorish cities of Cordova and Seville falling to the Christians in 1236 and 1248 respectively. The Almohads continued to rule in Africa until the piecemeal loss of territory through the revolt of tribes and districts enabled the rise of their most effective enemies, the Marinids, in 1215. The last representative of the line, Idris al Waythiq, was reduced to the possession of Marrakesh, where he was murdered by a slave in 1269. The Marinids seized Marrakesh, ending the Almohad domination of the Western Maghreb. History Topic. Origins The Almohad movement originated with Ibn Tumart, a member of the Mismuda, a Berber tribal confederation of the Atlas Mountains of southern Morocco. At the time, Morocco, and much of the rest of North Africa Maghreb and Spain Al -Andalus, was under the rule of the Almoravids, a Sanhaya Berber dynasty. Early in his life, Ibn Tumart went to Spain to pursue his studies, and thereafter to Baghdad to deepen them. In Baghdad, Ibn Tumart attached himself to the theological school of al-Ash'ari, and came under the influence of the teacher al-Ghazali. He soon developed his own system, combining the doctrines of various masters. Ibn Tumart's main principle was a strict Unitarianism tahid, which denied the independent existence of the attributes of God as being incompatible with his unity, and therefore a polytheistic idea. Ibn Tumart represented a revolt against what he perceived as anthropomorphism in Muslim orthodoxy. His followers would become known as the al mawahidin Almohads, meaning those who affirm the unity of God. After his return to the Maghreb c.1117, Ibn Tumart spent some time in various Ifriqian cities, preaching and agitating, heading riotous attacks on wine shops and on other manifestations of laxity. He laid the blame for the latitude on the ruling dynasty of the Almoravids, whom he accused of obscurantism and impiety. He also opposed their sponsorship of the Maliki school of jurisprudence, which drew upon consensus and other sources beyond the Quran and Sunnah in their reasoning, an anathema to the stricter Zahirism favored by Ibn Tumart. His antics and fiery preaching led fed-up authorities to move him along from town to town. After being expelled from Bayaya, Ibn Tumart set up camp in Melala, in the outskirts of the city, where he received his first disciples, notably, al-Bashir who would become his chief strategist and Abd al-Mumin a Zanata Berber, who would later become his successor. In 1120, Ibn Tumart and his small band of followers proceeded to Morocco, stopping first in Fez, where he briefly engaged the Maliki scholars of the city in debate. He even went so far as to assault the sister of the Almoravid emir Ali ibn Yusuf, in the streets of Fez, because she was going about unveiled, after the manner of Berber women. After being expelled from Fez, he went to Marrakesh, where he successfully tracked down the Almoravid emir Ali ibn Yusuf at a local mosque, and challenged the emir, and the leading scholars of the area, to a doctrinal debate. After the debate, the scholars concluded that Ibn Tumart's views were blasphemous and the man dangerous, and urged him to be put to death or imprisoned. But the emir decided merely to expel him from the city. Ibn Tumart took refuge among his own people, the Harga, in his home village of Igalis exact location uncertain, in the Suze Valley. He retreated to a nearby cave, and lived out an ascetic lifestyle, coming out only to preach his program of Puritan reform, attracting greater and greater crowds. 
At length, towards the end of Ramadan in late 1121, after a particularly moving sermon, reviewing his failure to persuade the Almoravids to reform by argument, Ibn Tumart revealed himself as the true Mahdi, a divinely guided judge and lawgiver, and was recognized as such by his audience. This was effectively a declaration of war on the Almoravid state. On the advice of one of his followers, Omar Hintati, a prominent chieftain of the Hintata, Ibn Tumart abandoned his cave in 1122 and went up into the High Atlas, to organize the Almohad movement among the highland Mismuta tribes. Besides his own tribe, the Harga, Ibn Tumart secured the adherence of the Ganfisa, the Gadmiwa, the Hintata, the Haskura, and the Hazraha to the Almohad cause. Around 1124, Ibn Tumart erected the Ribbit of Tinmel, in the valley of the Nfis in the High Atlas, an impregnable fortified complex, which would serve both as the spiritual center and military headquarters of the Almohad movement. For the first eight years, the Almohad rebellion was limited to a guerrilla war along the peaks and ravines of the High Atlas. Their principal damage was in rendering insecure or altogether impassable the roads and mountain passes south of Marrakesh, threatening the route to all-important Sijilmasa, the gateway of the trans-Saharan trade. Unable to send enough manpower through the narrow passes to dislodge the Almohad rebels from their easily defended mountain strong points, the Almoravid authorities reconciled themselves to setting up strongholds to confine them there most famously the fortress of Tazgamaut that protected the approach to Agmat, while exploring alternative routes through more easterly passes. Ibn Tumart organized the Almohads as a commune, with a minutely detailed structure. At the core was the Al-Ad-Dar. House of the Mahdi Smiley Face, composed of Ibn Tumart's family. This was supplemented by two councils, an inner council of ten, the Mahdi's Privy Council, composed of his earliest and closest companions, and the Consultative Council of Fifty, composed of the leading sheikhs of the Mismuta tribes. The early preachers and missionaries Talba and Hufas also had their representatives. Militarily, there was a strict hierarchy of units. The Harga tribe coming first, although not strictly ethnic, it included many honorary or adopted tribesmen from other ethnicities, e.g. Abd al mumin himself. This was followed by the men of Tinmel, then the other Mismuta tribes in order, and rounded off by the black fighters, the Abid. Each unit had a strict internal hierarchy, headed by a motasib, and divided into two factions, one for the early adherents, another for the late adherents, each headed by a mizwar or amswaru, then came the sakhakan treasurers, effectively the money minters, tax collectors, and bursars, then came the regular army jund, then the religious corps, the muezzins, the hafi and the hizb, followed by the archers, the conscripts, and the slaves. Ibn Tumart's closest companion and chief strategist, al-Bashir, took upon himself the role of political commissar, enforcing doctrinal discipline among the Mismuta tribesmen, often with a heavy head. In early 1130, the Almohads finally descended from the mountains for their first sizable attack in the lowlands. It was a disaster. The Almohads swept aside an Almoravid column that had come out to meet them before Agmat, and then chased their remnant all the way to Marrakesh. They laid siege to Marrakesh for 40 days until, in April or May 1130, the Almoravids sallied from the city and crushed the Almohads in the bloody Battle of al buhaira named after a large garden east of the city. The Almohads were thoroughly routed, with huge losses. Half their leadership was killed in action, and the survivors only just managed to scramble back to the mountains. Ibn Tumart died shortly after, in August 1130. That the Almohad movement did not immediately collapse after such a devastating defeat and the death of their charismatic Mahdi, is a testament to the careful organization Ibn Tumart had built up at Tinmel. There was probably a struggle for succession, in which Abd al mumin prevailed. Although a Zanata Berber from Targa Algeria, and thus an alien among the Mismuda of southern Morocco, Abd al mumin nonetheless saw off his principal rivals and hammered wavering tribes back to the fold. In an ostentatious gesture of defiance, in 1132, if only to remind the emir that the Almohads were not finished, Abd al mumin led an audacious night operation that seized Tazgamaut Fortress and dismantled it thoroughly, carting off its great gates back to Tinmel. <laughs> Al-Andalus Abd al mumin then came forward as the lieutenant of the Mahdi ibn Tumart. Between 1130 and his death in 1163, Abd al mumin not only rooted out the Marabits but extended his power over all northern Africa as far as Egypt, becoming Emir of Marrakesh in 1149. 
Al-Andalus followed the fate of Africa. Between 1146 and 1173, the Almohads gradually wrested control from the Marabits over the Moorish principalities in Iberia. The Almohads transferred the capital of Muslim Iberia from Córdoba to Seville. They founded a great mosque there, its tower, the Giralda, was erected in 1184 to mark the accession of Yaqub I. The Almohads also built a palace there called al muwarak on the site of the modern-day Alcazar of Seville. The Almohad princes had a longer and more distinguished career than the Marabits. The successors of Abd al mumin Abu Yaqub Yusuf Yusuf I, ruled 1163–1184 and Abu Yusuf Yaqub al-Mansur Yaqub I, ruled 1184–1199, were both able men. Initially their government drove many Jewish and Christian subjects to take refuge in the growing Christian states of Portugal, Castile, and Aragon. Ultimately they became less fanatical than the Marabits, and Yaqub al-Mansur was a highly accomplished man who wrote a good Arabic style and protected the philosopher Averroes. His title of al-Mansur, the victorious, was earned by his victory over Alfonso VIII of Castile in the Battle of Alarcos 1195. From the time of Yusuf II, however, the Almohads governed their co-religionists in Iberia and central North Africa through lieutenants, their dominions outside Morocco being treated as provinces. When Almohad emirs crossed the straits it was to lead a jihad against the Christians and then return to Morocco. <laughs> <laughs> Holding years However, the Christian states in Iberia were becoming too well organized to be overrun by the Muslims, and the Almohads made no permanent advance against them. In 1212, the Almohad Caliph Muhammad al -Nasir the successor of Al-Mansur, after an initially successful advance north, was defeated by an alliance of the four Christian kings of Castile, Aragon, Navarre, and Portugal, at the Battle of Las Navas de Toulouse in the Sierra Morena. The battle broke the Almohad advance, but the Christian powers remained too disorganized to profit from it immediately. Before his death in 1213, al-Nasir appointed his young ten-year-old son as the next caliph Yusuf II. Al -Mustansir. The Almohads passed through a period of effective regency for the young caliph, with power exercised by an oligarchy of elder family members, palace bureaucrats and leading nobles. The Almohad ministers were careful to negotiate a series of truces with the Christian kingdoms, which remained more or less in place for next 15 years the loss of Alcacer du Sal to the Kingdom of Portugal in 1217 was an exception. In early 1224, the youthful caliph died in accident, without any heirs. The palace bureaucrats in Marrakesh, led by the wazir Uthman ibn Jami, quickly engineered the election of his elderly grand-uncle, Abd al-Wahid I al as the new Almohad caliph. But the rapid appointment upset other branches of the family, notably the brothers of the late al-Nasir, who governed in al-Andalus. The challenge was immediately raised by one of them, then governor in Murcia, who declared himself Caliph Abdallah al-Adil. With the help of his brothers, he quickly seized control of al-Andalus. His chief advisor, the shadowy Abu Zayd ibn Yujan, tapped into his contacts in Marrakesh, and secured the deposition and assassination of Abd al-Wahid I, and the expulsion of the al jamii clan. This coup has been characterized as the pebble that finally broke al-Andalus. It was the first internal coup among the Almohads. The Almohad clan, despite occasional disagreements, had always remained tightly knit and loyally behind dynastic precedents. Caliph al-Adil's murderous breach of dynastic and constitutional propriety marred his acceptability to other Almohad sheikhs. One of the recusants was his cousin, Abd Allah al-Bayasi, the Bizan, the Almohad governor of Jaan, who took a handful of followers and decamped for the hills around Biza. He set up a rebel camp and forged an alliance with the hitherto quiet Ferdinand III of Castile. Sensing his greater priority was Marrakesh, where recusant Almohad sheikhs had rallied behind Yahya, another son of al-Nasir, al-Adil paid little attention to this little band of misfits. <inaudible> Reconquista In 1225, Abdallah al-Bayazi's band of rebels, accompanied by a large Castilian army, descended from the hills, besieging cities such as Jaan and Andujar. They raided throughout the regions of Jaén, Cordova and Vega de Granada and, before the end of the year, al-Bayasi had established himself in the city of Cordova. 
Sensing a power vacuum, both Alfonso IX of Leon and Sancho II of Portugal opportunistically ordered raids into Andalusian territory that same year. With Almohad arms, men and cash dispatched to Morocco to help Caliph al-Adil impose himself in Marrakesh, there was little means to stop the sudden onslaught. In late 1225, with surprising ease, the Portuguese raiders reached the environs of Seville. Knowing they were outnumbered, the Almohad governors of the city refused to confront the Portuguese raiders, prompting the disgusted population of Seville to take matters into their own hands, raise a militia, and go out in the field by themselves. The result was a veritable massacre, the Portuguese men-at-arms easily mowed down the throng of poorly armed townsfolk. Thousands, perhaps as much as 20,000, were said to have been slain before the walls of Seville. A similar disaster befell a similar popular levy by Mercians at ASPE that same year. But Christian raiders had been stopped at Caceres and Requena. Trust in the Almohad leadership was severely shaken by these events. The disasters were promptly blamed on the distractions of Caliph al Adil and the incompetence and cowardice of his lieutenants, the successes credited to non Almohad local leaders who rallied defences. But al Adil's fortunes were briefly buoyed. In payment for Castilian assistance, al Bayasi had given Ferdinand III three strategic frontier fortresses, Banos de la Encina, Salvadiera the old order of Calatrava fortress near Ciudad Real and Capilla. But Capilla refused to hand them over, forcing the Castilians to lay a long and difficult siege. The brave defiance of little Capilla, and the spectacle of al Bayasi's shipping provisions to the Castilian besiegers, shocked Andalusians and shifted sentiment back towards the Almohad Caliph. A popular uprising broke out in Cordova, al Bayasi was killed and his head dispatched as a trophy to Marrakesh. But Caliph al Adil did not rejoice in this victory for long, he was assassinated in Marrakesh in October 1227, by the partisans of Yahya, who was promptly acclaimed as the new Almohad Caliph Yahya. Al the Andalusian branch of the Almohads refused to accept this turn of events. Al Adil's brother, then in Seville, proclaimed himself the new Almohad Caliph Abd al Allah Idris I. Al he promptly purchased a truce from Ferdinand III in return for 300,000 Maravedis, allowing him to organize and dispatch the greater part of the Almohad army in Spain across the Straits in 1228 to confront Yahya. That same year, Portuguese and Leonese renewed their raids deep into Muslim territory, basically unchecked. Feeling the Almohads had failed to protect them, popular uprisings took place throughout Al-Andalus. City after city deposed their hapless Almohad governors and installed local strongmen in their place. A Murcian strongman, Muhammad ibn Yusuf ibn Hud al-Judami, who claimed descendants from the Banu Hud dynasty that had once ruled the old taifa of Saragossa, emerged as the central figure of these rebellions, systematically dislodging Almohad garrisons through central Spain. In October 1228, with Spain practically all lost, al Maimon abandoned Seville, taking what little remained of the Almohad army with him to Morocco. Ibn Hud immediately dispatched emissaries to distant Baghdad to offer recognition to the Abbasid Caliph, albeit taking up for himself a quasi-caliphal title, al mutawakkil The departure of al Maimon in 1228 marked the end of the Almohad era in Spain. Ibn Hud and the other local Andalusian strongmen were unable to stem the rising flood of Christian attacks, launched almost yearly by Sancho II of Portugal, Alfonso IX of Leon, Ferdinand III of Castile and James I of Aragon. The next 20 years saw a massive advance in the Christian Reconquista, the old great Andalusian citadels fell in a grand sweep, Merida and Badajoz in 1230 to Leon, Majorca in 1230 to Aragon, Beja in 1234 to Portugal, Cordova in 1236 to Castile, Valencia in 1238 to Aragon, Niebla Huelva in 1238 to Leon, Silves in 1242 to Portugal, Murcia in 1243 to Castile, John in 1246 to Castile, Alicante in 1248 to Castile, culminating in the fall of the greatest of Andalusian cities, the ex Almohad capital of Seville, into Christian hands in 1248. Ferdinand III of Castile entered Seville as a conqueror on December 22, 1248. The Andalusians were helpless before this onslaught. Ibn Hud had attempted to check the Leonese advance early on, but most of his Andalusian army was destroyed at the Battle of Alange in 1230. Ibn Hud scrambled to move remaining arms and men to save threatened or besieged Andalusian citadels, but with so many attacks at once, it was a hopeless endeavor. 
After Ibn Hud's death in 1238, some of the Andalusian cities, in a last-ditch effort to save themselves, offered themselves once again to the Almohads, but to no avail. The Almohads would not return. With the departure of the Almohads, the Nasra dynasty, Banu Nasri, Arabic, Bandw Nur rose to power in Granada. After the great Christian advance of 1228–1248, the Emirate of Granada was practically all that remained of old Al-Andalus. Some of the captured citadels e Murcia, Jn, Niebla, were reorganized as tributary vassals for a few more years, but most were annexed by the 1260s. Granada alone would remain independent for an additional 250 years, flourishing as the new center of Al-Andalus. Collapse in the Maghreb In their African holdings, the Almohads encouraged the establishment of Christians even in Fez, and after the Battle of Las Navas de Toulouse they occasionally entered into alliances with the kings of Castile. They were successful in expelling the garrisons placed in some of the coast towns by the Norman kings of Sicily. The history of their decline differs from that of the Almoravids, whom they had displaced. They were not assailed by a great religious movement, but lost territories, piecemeal, by the revolt of tribes and districts. Their most effective enemies were the Banu Marin Marinids who founded the next dynasty. The last representative of the line, Idris II, al waithiq was reduced to the possession of Marrakesh, where he was murdered by a slave in 1269. <laughs> Culture Almohad universities continued the knowledge of Greek and Roman ancient writers, while contemporary cultural figures included Averroes and the Jewish philosopher Maimonides. In terms of Muslim jurisprudence, the state gave recognition to the Zahirite school of thought, though Shafiites were also given a measure of authority at times. While not all Almohad leaders were Zahirites, quite a few of them were not only adherents of the legal school but also well versed in its tenets. Additionally, all Almohad leaders, both the religiously learned and the layman, were hostile toward the Malachite school favored by the Almoravids. During the reign of Abu Yaqob, Chief Judge Ibn Ma oversaw the banning of all religious books written by non Zahirites. When Abu Yaqob's son Abu Yusuf took the throne, he ordered Ibn Ma to undertake the actual burning of such books. In terms of Islamic theology, the Almohads were Asharites, their Zahirite Asharism giving rise to a complicated blend of literalist jurisprudence and esoteric dogmatics. The style of Almohad art was essentially an Oriental one, although most of the workers were from Al Andalus. The main sites of Almohad architecture and art include Fes, Marrakesh, Rabat, and Seville. Figurative arts suffered somewhat from the orthodox interpretation of the Quran, which forbade human representation, and thus the genre of art which flourished mostly in the Almohad lands was architecture. The Almohads reduced decorations, and introduced the use of geometrical holes, following in general the principle of expressing a certain degree of magnificence. As centuries passed, the buildings had increasingly oriental appearance and similar structures, mosques with rectangular plans, divided into naves with pillars, as well as a wide use of horseshoe-shaped arches. The most common building material was brickwork, followed by mortar. Foreign influence can be seen in domes of Egyptian origin and, in the civil sector, the triumphal arches inspired by those in the same country. The construction of fortifications with towers was also widespread. The main Almohad structures include the Giralda of the former Mosque of Seville founded in 1171, the Kotubia Mosque and the Bab Ksiba of the Kasba of Marrakesh, the Hassan Tower of Rabat and the Adalaya Castle in Andalusia. <laughs> <laughs> Status of non-Muslims The Almohads had taken control of the Almoravid Maghribi and Andalusian territories by 1147. The Almohads rejected the mainstream Islamic doctrine that established the status of Dhimmi, a non-Muslim resident of a Muslim country who was allowed to practice his religion on condition of submission to Muslim rule and payment of jizya. The treatment of Jews under Almohad rule was a drastic change. Prior to Almohad rule during the Caliphate of Cordoba, Jewish culture experienced a golden age. Maria Rosa Menachal, a specialist in Iberian literature at Yale University, has argued that tolerance was an inherent aspect of Andalusian society," and that the Jewish dhimmis living under the caliphate, while allowed fewer rights than Muslims, were still better off than in Christian Europe. Many Jews migrated to Al-Andalus, where they were not just tolerated, but allowed to practice their faith openly. 
Christians had also practiced their religion openly in Cordoba, and both Jews and Christians lived openly in Morocco as well. The first Almohad leader, Abd al mumin allowed an initial seven-month grace period. Then he forced most of the urban Dhimmi population in Morocco, both Jewish and Christian, to convert to Islam. Those who converted had to wear identifying clothing, as they weren't regarded as sincere Muslims. Cases of mass martyrdom of Jews who refused to convert to Islam are recorded, many of the conversions were superficial. Maimonides urged Jews to choose the superficial conversion over martyrdom, arguing that Muslims know very well that we do not mean what we say, and that what we say is only to escape the ruler's punishment and to satisfy him with this simple confession." Abraham ibn Ezra who himself fled the persecutions of the Almohads, composed an elegy mourning the destruction of many Jewish communities throughout Spain and the Maghreb under the Almohads. Many Jews fled from territories ruled by the Almohads to Christian lands, and others, like the family of Maimonides, fled east to more tolerant Muslim lands. However, a few Jewish traders still working in North Africa are recorded. The treatment of Christians under Almohad rule was a drastic change. Many Christians were killed, forced to convert, or forced to flee. Some Christians fled to the Christian kingdoms in the north and west and helped fuel the Reconquista. Martyrs under Almohad rule included. Daniel and Companions, d. 1221 John of Perugia and Peter of Sassiferato, d. 1231 Saint Serapion of Algiers, d. 1240 Idris al maimon a late Almohad pretender ruled 1229–1232 in parts of Morocco, renounced much Almohad doctrine, including the identification of Ibn Tumart as the Mahdi, and the denial of Dhimmi status. He allowed Jews to practice their religion openly in Marrakesh, and even allowed a Christian church there as part of his alliance with Castile. In Iberia, Almohad rule collapsed in the 1200s, and was succeeded by several taifa kingdoms, which allowed Jews to practice their religion openly. <laughs> List of Almohad caliphs 1121-1269 Ibn Tumart 1121-1130 Abd al mumin 1130-1163 Abu Yaqab Yusuf I 1163-1184 Abu Yusuf Yaqab 1184-1199 Muhammad al Nasir 1199-1213 Abu Yaqab Yusuf II 1213-1224 Abu Muhammad Abd al Wahid I, al 1224. Abdallah al Adil 1224 to 1227. Yahya al 1227 to 1229. Abu al Allah Idris I al Maimun 1229 to 1232. Abu Muhammad Abd al Wahid II, al Rashid 1232 to 1242. Abu al Hasan Ali al Said 1242 to 1248. Abu Hafs Umar Al Murtada, 1248 to 1266. Abu Al Ula Abu Dabis Idris II Al Wathi, 1266 to 1269. Topic. See also. List of Mahdi claimants. Modest war. Topic. References. Topic. Sources Bell, Alfred. 1903. Les Benu Gagne, Derniers représentants de l'Empire Almoravide et leur lutte contre l'Empire Almohadi, Paris, E. La Rue. Henry. 1881. Conquest of Spain by the Arab Moors. Boston, Little, Brown. OCLC 13304630. Dozy, Reinhardt. History of the Almohades. Ed. Leiden, E. J. Brill. OCLC 13,648,381. Goldziher, Ignac. Le Livre de Muhammad ibn Tumert, Mahdi des Almohades. PDF. Alger, P. Fontana. Kennedy, Hugh N. Muslim Spain and Portugal A Political History of Al Andalus. New York, Longman. pp. 196 to 266. 
ISBN 0-582-49515-6. Popa, Marcel D., Matei, Horia C. 1988. Mica Encyclopedia de Istoria Universala. Bucharest, Editora Politica. OCLC 895214574. External links Almohad's Dynasty, Islamic Architecture Abd al-Mumin Life Among Mismudas, Encyclopædia Britannica Al-Andalus, The Art of Islamic Spain, an exhibition catalogue from the Metropolitan Museum of Art fully available online as PDF, which contains material on Almohad Caliphate see index.